So um, obviously this replaces the old uh, crossroads. Mm -hmm. What's kind of your plan long term for this particular yeah, weekend event, whatever? Well, for us, obviously, we like to continue to play in Indianapolis, but there's a lot of other events kind of looming. So we're um, just kind of waiting to, to see, obviously, where the Gavit Games goes. Obviously, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, we got to be able to pick up on something. If we don't play in Indianapolis again, then obviously pick up on another home-and-home -home or uh, an event like the ACC Big Ten Challenge, which would obviously not be conference-wide, but... Uh, trying to get quality opponents. If you look at good schedules, you know, you're looking at people that are playing five to six non-conference games that are NCAA tournament teams, high major teams. And if you can hang in there, and especially your other teams not play people in the 250s and below, 225s and below, you're really going to help yourself, especially with the strength of schedule within our conference. Uh, that is on Mason. Um, he practiced today. Today was the first day he practiced. So um, I don't know if he did everything, um, but he did most everything. So that's that's good. I think anytime you're dealing with somebody's back, it's always good to wait to the next day to see how they are also. So hopefully he, can, he feels good tomorrow and he can practice tomorrow and, and be ready to go Saturday. Would he move back to where he was in your rotation right away? Or? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I always kind of play the eye test with it. You know, sometimes kind of wean guys back in. Just depends. You know, it depends on how they are when they go back in there. It depends on who they are um, and in terms of how they recover and how they get back. And, but I, I, I gauge it on how other people play, and I gauge it on obviously how they play. Uh, Davidson. They're kind of similar to you guys in that they run their stuff really well. Right. How do you prepare for that defense? Well, I think you just got to stay with their guards and make it hard on them. Obviously, Foster Boyer is a guy that averages 20, um, that can catch and shoot, can drive, can make plays. And you just got to – the guy like that, he's going to make some shots. He's gonna, you just want him to make some tough ones, and you want him to not get – Easy rhythm threes, like a transition three, an in and out three, a penetration a kick three. I and mean, you just got to, guys like that, you got to limit them to the best of your ability. They're going to find their way and score the ball some. Um, but you just don't hope they, you know, he has one of those nights that he did against Wright State and he gets 39. But the efficiency of their offense, their, their big guys can step out and shoot. Um, their guards, you know, can drive the basketball, they can shoot the basketball. Um, they're efficient in what they do. Um, we just got to do a good job of sticking with the guys that can shoot and doing our best to keep the ball out of the game. Some motivation for Fletch uh, going against Big Brother and saying, hey, yeah. you probably got beat up in the driveway growing up. Here's your chance to get him back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it just kind of happened organically. And uh, when obviously the crossroads shut down and then trying to find opponents right there. We have played Davidson before in Indianapolis. Um, so we played him in Charleston about four or five years ago in a tournament. Uh, very good program. Uh, but no, when that happened, that, that just seemed like the right thing to do for those guys to be able to, to climb like that. My annual question about your week-long block of practice uninterrupted. Yeah. Anything you really wanted to sharpen this weekend? Or? You know, not really. You know, we missed some shots. You know, we had some mental mistakes in terms of time and score and some different things like that. Uh, you know, just watching film and communicating individually and as a team. You know, some of those lessons that we learned in the Nebraska game. Um, but yeah, we, we, we had some, we're up 14 with 14 minutes to go. Like we're in a good position. Um, we miss a, a jump hook and then they get a four point play and all of a sudden, you know, instead of it being a 16 or 17, it's at 10. And now it's manageable, you're on the road, it gets loud, and then we go cold. But like, you know, I'm process based and I thought we had a lot of really good shots. Um, we missed a handful of layups, we missed free throws, we missed open threes, and it always looks better when it goes in. And it always looks worse when it doesn't. So just trying to get those guys to, you know, take the shots that are there and, and, and be confident with them. You mentioned it briefly after Nebraska, just uh, David Jenkins up and immediately when it came off the right. Right show. What, what's going to kind of help them, you know, uh, just balancing making the right play and also, you know, yeah. realizing his ability to create his own shot? Yeah, you know, ideally it's better for him to be in the game with Brayton. Yeah. You know, you could like push it that direction, but we have other people also. So Fletcher's there, Brandon Newman's there, Ethan Morton's there. So it's not as easy as it looks to say, hey, let's, you know, do what's best for him when sometimes it gets in the way with a lot of other people, um, what's best for us. So, but anytime we can kind of get that that piece of it, I think that really helps him because Brayden can set him up and you can kind of see how he, the rhythm 
of the dribble really helps him. He loves that rhythm dribble pull up. And, you know, just trying to find it. We ran a couple things for him. One time he passed it up. The other time he fell down. He got tripped. Um, so just you know, just trying to get him going. Um, but it's it's difficult. You know, it, it's a real difficult chore when you're running a lot of stuff for Zach. You run stuff for Braden and Fletch. You know, you're looking at different things to to play off of, whether that's dribble penetration or post up basketball, and then. Um, you know, kind of blend it in. It's, it's a hard piece, but he's definitely a weapon and, and, and something that, you know, when he's on the court, you know, we can look for. Coach, you have any extra swagger or flex now after, you know, throwing down his first dunk probably in his life? <laughs> no, I, it was kind of, you know, interesting for me because I'd never seen him dunk. You know, you know, normally you see guys dunk messing around after practice and stuff. So it was a very functional play. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he drove and dunked it, and, and he might have needed to dunk it. Like, you know what I mean? And so, like, it was very functional, and uh, he got hit. I thought he got fouled, but um, no, as long as he makes him, I'm cool. Not that he lacks confidence, but how has he grown in that confidence, just kind of being that consistent number two scorer for you this year? Yeah, well, you can talk all you want. You can see it when the chips are down and you're on the road and it gets loud. Like, who wants the ball? Another night, even though like he wasn't making shots, he was making plays. You know, he made pull-ups, he got drives. You know, he only hit two threes out of ten shots. You know, he wasn't making shots, and yet he was still confident. You know, that's what you want when you see that as a coach, man. You're, you're going to struggle to take that guy out because when you get on the road, you can't have enough people out there that want the basketball. Does it take players like him time sometimes to adjust to like being open every now and then? I think because so. Because when you got three guys guarding you, it's yeah. You know, in high school, it's a little bit different when you're in yeah. college, and you know all of a sudden I you get clean looks. Yeah, he's got a lot of clean looks against Nebraska. You know, yeah. Braden really set him up. You know, a handful of times, especially at the end of regulation, he just could have ended it right there. Um, it was a great decision and a great pass by Braden. Um, but yeah, I think so. I think sometimes being that wide open, you know, to a guy that's not used to being wide open, can kind of mess with you a little bit. But you know, it's he'll he'll find his way in terms of his three point percentages. He'll he'll it'll water finds his level. Because he's shooting pretty well off shot fakes and you know off right. like, kind of single dribble, almost like he's yeah well, conditioned to do that because I of what he thought. People that don't nice. watch, they try to you know guess from the you know the tenth row. You know, will be stereotypical and call him a shooter. And he's a good player. Yeah. You know, he can make drives, he can pull ups. You can pass. You can do more than shoot threes. Hey, one last thing for you. Just the steadiness Zach's provided, the consistency, the fact he's the same guy every day. Right. As hard as he's played all year. Just how important is that to a team when your best player is setting those types of tones? Oh, it's huge. You know, for him, you know, he's consistently played without fouling. Um, some games he's been better at blocking shots than others. Every game he's rebounded. When you know you're you know, getting those 13 rebounds every single game, that's huge. You know, he, he goes after the ball. He goes. He fights for post position. Um, he, he fights for offensive rebound position. You know, he's constantly holding this guy accountable. If we can get by that kind of that first wave of defense, those guys are in such a wrestling match down there that there's a lot of people there. But you can get those spray out threes because they give him so much attention. Davidson likes to uh, bring up two bigs and almost give Foster two options for pick and rolls a lot. Right. Big. Right. How do you? Defend that. What do you tell Brady Smith um, you know, not to get caught up when he goes? Yeah, you know, you, just, you know, you don't allow turndowns more than anything. Don't allow them to go the opposite direction. Stay into the basketball. Don't get a screen. Just stay with your regular ball screen defensive rules. You know, you anytime guys can score like that, you want to take up their space and try to make them as uncomfortable as possible and be up there in ball screens and bottle them up. But also know that you got to have high hands so they can't move the ball quick on you and then you get behind plays.